Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Bear Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to run container templates on your Raspberry Pi Proxmox 7. So let's get started. Now, one of the things that I find that will actually do really well on the Raspberry Pi Proxmox is container templates. Now you can still run full VMs and everything, which is really cool in this environment, but being able to run container templates will save you on a lot of resources. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to download the templates and install your own container template. So let's get started. To begin, uh, here we are on our Proxmox and I did update to version 7.2. So it is upgradable to the latest version right now. And as you can see, I have the eight gigabyte version of the board, uh, four CPUs. It is overclocked to two gigahertz. I could probably overclock it to 2.1 just to get that extra little speed. But yeah, no, I've been very stable on this. I got my Arch Linux working. Well, it stopped now. And I do have also Debian running as well. Now, what we're gonna do is jump over to our local storage. And you can see there's ISO image that you can install here, uh, CT volumes or CT templates, but there's nothing here. So how do I actually create a CT template? If, even if I tried right now, there's no template file. So if I could, let me show you guys what I mean. If I go over here, host name, I'll worry about that later, but there's nothing here that I could install. So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below on where you could get this, but this goes to Chronicle and this is where they host all the LXD images. Now there are quite a few selection here that you could use, which is Arch Linux, BusyBox, Debian, uh, Rocky Linux, or even, you know, OpenWRT, but I'm just gonna grab the standard Ubuntu. Go over to this link, download the version that you want, which the latest is Jammy, so we're gonna use Jammy. Make sure it's ARM64, go to default, and click on the latest date. This is the time when they compile it. Now, scroll over to the bottom and you're gonna look for root FS tar, but you're not gonna click here to download it. You're actually gonna right click and copy the link. So this way you could just download it from your Proxmox. So I'm gonna go to the CT templates right here and go to download from URL, drop this in here, and it's gonna say root FS. So we make sure to name the file to what you want. So in my case, it's jamie.tar.xz. So I'm gonna hit download and we're gonna let this go, which takes I think it's only 70 megabytes, or in this case, 113, so about 100 megabytes. Now that it's done, you're gonna have this image right here, and you can download more as you go. If you need to download Arch Linux or something like that, you could do, get it from here. So now if I go to create CT on the top right, uh, we can now put in our host name, so I'm just gonna call this jamie-ct. Uh, name the password, so I'm gonna, I'm not name the password, set the password up. Next, go to templates and I have my Jammy template. Go to disk. Since it's a template, you don't require much space. Like even the image itself zipped is only about 100 megabytes or 103 as you can see in the background. So you could, do, you could leave it as eight gigs, but if you know your project's gonna require more space, if you're compiling something or whatever it is, you could go up to 16 or whatever. So I'm gonna leave it on eight. Next, CPU cores. This you could set, I normally set it to two just a habit, but you could leave it as one. Memory, now again, because this is a container, you don't need that much memory. Uh, you could set it up to 1024, which is one gig of RAM, and leave swap if you want. You don't need that much space. You're not emulating a full, you know, CPU all the way down to a sound card. You're just using whatever the resources you have on the actual host machine. So yeah, low RAM, it's fine. Next, your network. Make sure you set the IPv4 to DHCP. And if you don't have IPv6, just leave that as static. Hit next, DNS, you can leave that as host unless you wanna use like Cloudflare or Google. You could change that to, you know, 1.1.1 or whatever you want. Next, and then you could confirm it. Give it a few minutes, nah, not even that much. I think it's like maybe 30 seconds. This will just finish extracting and it will give you the template itself. Okay, I lied, maybe a minute. All right, there we have it, task okay. That did take like two minutes. Uh, close that out and now we have our own little new container. I'm gonna hit start. And as you can see, it got previous information because I've done this already. So I know this works. Now that I start this, I could jump into console and there we have our login root and the password we set and let me see there is no htop so let's do su nope don't even need sudo app update let's grab some stuff from here um lsb underscore release dash a 
Ubuntu 22, Jamie, perfect. And install HTOP. Yes. Let's check out HTOP. And you can see it's two cores and one gig of RAM. It's only using 34 megabytes of RAM, uh, the two cores. And if I do DF-H, you could see it's only using about 549 megabytes you know, fully loaded. So that's really not bad. I still got six or seven gigs free out of the eight gigs that we just gave it. So yeah, it doesn't require much resources to run CTs. And honestly, in this type of environment or this type of build for Raspberry Pi, I would recommend uh, running more CTs on here because you can run different types of software operating like anything you want, like Arch Linux or Debian or Rocky Linux, if you wanted different uh, distros or even Fedora, they even had the image for Fedora. All right guys, so I had a couple of days to play around with the CT containers and you can actually install whatever you want, Jammy, Arch, Fedora, like I mentioned before. But one of the things you could do is actually add a desktop to it. Now I won't display in console because there's actually no video graphic drivers that will pass through to this window but you can actually just install XFCE 4 along with some sort of RDP or VNC and you should still be able to get the remote session that you want. So here I have the Jammy and I, you saw me install this a couple of days ago or in that video and if you could see like right now I just have a regular console right here. Now what I did do is actually added uh, XFCE 4 along with uh, XRDP and my IP address is 245 so what I could do is now, um, let me pull it up, remember now, and pop in the IP address of the device, and I will get a remote session. Here we go. Now I'm gonna change to dynamic resolution update, and let me just make this a little bit bigger, and I can log in with the username and password that I created for the regular user, and here we have our session. So I could actually use this as a regular desktop, if I wanted to pull up HTOP, um, you could see the um, it's using about 400 megs of RAM. I could probably allocate a little bit more RAM and give it some swap. But yeah, this works just like a regular remote desktop session. And I get my desktop from that container. Now there are some uh, problems with it where you can't use snap packages and stuff because you can't use Fuse. But that's not a problem. I mean, if you just needed a desktop to browse the web and you wanted to use low resources like a container, you absolutely can. Now here I'm just starting up. Um, I think I got Firefox installed on here. So here's Firefox, the RAM's coming up and it's 579. Under one gig of RAM, I'm still able to use Firefox. Let me pop into YouTube, that might break it because that uses a lot of RAM, but it will load. Um, along with a few other things, if you're using say file manager, if you want to transfer some files, yeah, just like a remote desktop session, this thing runs just fine. I mean, obviously there are some speeds uh, because this is running, you know, two gigs, uh, two gigahertz. And I think I only got two cores allocated to it. So it's not going to be as fast as using the Raspberry Pi natively, but yeah, 800 megs of Ram. That's what Firefox opened. Now I just closed it. So it goes back down to 400. I still have all my packages or my uh, program. Yeah, so that is it. I mean, if you want to use your container as well as a desktop, you could do it this method as well. Now let's just jump back to the video. The CTs are not really used for production environments. Mostly VMs are because it's easier to migrate, backup, and uh, things like that. But again, for this type of instance, because it's a completely different uh, CPU and mostly for testing purposes, I think the Raspberry Pi really shines on using CT images versus uh, running regular uh, VMs on here. I mean, at most I tried, I was able to get three VMs and I kind of maxed out on the RAM and I can't do anything more if you run out of RAM. So CTs probably are the best uh, alternate selection for this. Anyway, that is it for this. It was a quick tutorial on how to get images. Uh, I'll leave the link to everything we talked about down in the description below. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up in the comments down below. Again, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.